Hello and welcome to Alex Builds. If you're a new viewer, you'll be interested to know we're two years and 23 episodes in. If you're an existing viewer, you're probably sick of this recap, but here's the highlights. We've got massive excavations, huge slopes, tree stumps everywhere, footing's gone wrong, a massive concrete cock-up, a less of a concrete cock-up, loads of stonework, the epic arch episode, and that pointy bit up the top. Now, mercifully, we're off that stonework, but now we're into the wood, and what should have been one video about a raised collar truss is now three. This is part three. Right, welcome back folks. Let's get cracking, loads to get on with. First massive job is getting these diagonals cut and in place. So what I've done now is I've done a string line. Now, this string is theoretically flush on this, but this isn't completely straight, if the truth be told. So I could have done it up a bit, down a bit, whatever, which gives me quite a bit of give, by the way. But if you follow that string line up, first of all, it shows us where it would cross this sort of cross beam type thing and also where it joins now remember i've taken a string line out from that angle i've cut there which is not entirely precise but it comes across here it's a bit rough here i know at it joins 870 mil i'm curious to know what dimension my design tells me i'm going to go and have a look Let's have a look at this dimension, shall we? I'm going to do this live. We have got, wait for it, 8.52. Okay, so I'm 18 mil, 1.8 centimeters out. But let me distress again, the angle that I cut on that is not completely accurate. Too. So at that sort of distance, be that far out, isn't a lot. Okay, it had to happen eventually. First cock up, big cock up. I mean, I'll get away with it. So I did this angled cut here, but I was only really supposed to come and meet this. I didn't set the depth. Right, now I've reflected on 10 minutes, so you can see already I've cut through here. I'm just gonna chop the end off because I've actually got about 300 mil extra on this one. I overspect it. So I'm gonna saw it off and have another go. So here it is huge the biggest bit of oak we have here's one of them this is upside down at the minute so there's a tenon at the top so if you imagine if i flip that over 180 degrees that will stick into the king post so i've got to cut that tenon out it took me two attempts to get that right and you can see the mortise for that diagonal although i say diagonal relative to this piece of wood it's going to go in at 90 degrees so i just need to cut that mortise and then as i pointed out just got to do those two tenons Right, I'm back. Gotta say, I think I've had a better sleep or something because I'm feeling well up for this today. I've only got a few hours, but I'm gonna crack on. However, I wouldn't call this dithering, but I can't cope with that. This is like the lower lawn at my house. It's not one I really look after, but this is turning into a bloody meadow. And look at that, there's like a flipping Christmas tree in there. Can't be having that. So quick whiz first. There we go, it's more like it. I'm well aware this is not a lawn mowing channel, but this is what I have to look at when I'm working. line on this one here and it was catching that's what it was still quite good okay I'm looking down on it you can see where I want to get to on the line still see the saw marks so again having a bit of trouble the main problem is my chisel is blunt and the planes can't get in so I'll uh, sharpen up the chisel after lunch and just sort that out okay there we go can you see that string line 
So basically the string line should sit flush on these. It's not bad. It's about two mil up, although it's actually sitting about a mil at the bottom. So it's about two mil up, which I could easily address if need be, just by moving the, uh, the diagonal across, flexing it just a tiny bit. Um, I'm declaring that as I always do, with intolerance. Tolerances that I just made up. Right, so this little setup with the string line behind tells me we're okay to mortise this out. Just need to check the width of it and that'll be fine. So this is a 90 degree one. A bit snug to say the least. I'm sure if I hammered this down it would go. But I'd never get it out again. Right then, how to sharpen a chisel. Plenty to choose from. There we go. Paul Sellers. And you look at the chisel and it looks sharp, it feels Sure. Is it Luke's sharp? sharp. Not really sure. He's from uh, Lancashire. Let's have a look. These are giving ground to about this side. We look at the, the package flatness. Now, it's very much something to shoot for, so we may as well say flatness. So, sandpaper on some plate glass. We generally lift up to dig. So, we may as well say flatness. So, I'm going on this face here. See, he's just sprayed something. Never been and he's not told me what it was. My but do not lift up. It's stones, wet stones, ceramics. Manufacturer and I push at that angle. Still feel. You rub it against a stone. I think that's what he's saying. I've got a stone. Drop it. Oh. oh yeah. Okay, so I'm now gonna embark on something which I think is gonna easily be the most difficult part. In fact, do you know, it could be the most difficult part of all of the oak framing. So I tried to explain this on site, it's quite hard. This this is SketchUp that I use for the designs. Anyway, look, this, this is the piece that I'm doing. So that there, can you see that? that mortise there that's the one that i've already dug okay let me get this and let me just spin it round so it's more or less flat you can see what i'm talking about so that mortise there just goes straight down but this mortise here this is what i'm talking about if you look let's get rid of that you can see that it goes in at an angle this is the really difficult bit as you look at it from this angle this edge here is basically like an underhang so as you look at it I've got to undermine this and you can see the angle here that it goes at I'm afraid that's about the best I can do to explain it but look a chain mortiser goes straight down it is not designed to go in like an angle that is what is going to require a bit of imagination so this is what I'm going to make notice the mortise up there that's that mortise there if I get this up at an angle you can see that I can make this Jig, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a jig. I don't think it is. Now, it will not come as any surprise to anyone watching that my material of choice for this is the trusty 2x4. Basically, what I can do is I can sit this on here drill it in, okay? The chain mortiser will sit on here, but I'm gonna angle this up a bit more. And by the way, these will be screwed in. This will be properly attached to this. I can clamp the mortiser onto this, plunge, and there you go. You get the idea? It's going in. Saturday, 20th of May. I'm up for this. First of all, whew, good weather. Unusual. I need to get this at a higher angle. So basically, I'm tilting the camera. I want it like that. So 
So we're going to cut straight down perpendicular to these. So basically the plunge will follow this line here. So I bought some new stuff this week in increasing order of expense. A nice flat 300mm ruler, £4.99. A nice flat 50mm ruler, £6.99. A chain mortiser, £1,320 delivered. Okay, mega contrast issues today, but I hope you can see this. So that's inside. So look, I mean the key bit, the difficult bit is this here, the getting that angle to go down. Now, as you can see, as I've cut from here, can you see I've drifted away from the line? The reason for that is that the mortiser probably wasn't quite set evenly across. I'll chisel that out by the way, I'm not it's not a major issue. So that is good. Again, slight contrast issues. So that's kind of worked. We've got the angle bit going in here. Now I need to tidy that up with a chisel. We've got the full depth here, but now I've got to undermine that. Because remember, let's see if I can get some light working, contrast. This is the line we're working to. And we've got to follow that underneath. So I am now going to construct, I think this is going to be a world first. I know I'm always making up words and forgetting words, but I'm going to make a chain mortiser sled. Watch this. I didn't do a particularly brilliant job of filming this, um, but as you can see, the idea is, is that you can go up and down, but you can slide it underneath when you're in to try and get that kind of undermining working. So we've got this area smooth going in here. We've got a nice void there. And we've started to get underneath here. That's the really, really tricky bit. Now it doesn't have to go all the way in. I mean, I could cut the tenon to match the shape of the hole. But the thing you gotta remember is, is that this surface underneath here is gonna be rotated 180 degrees. So it's gonna be massively load bearing. It's gonna be taking the weight of the tenon. Other than to gouge a load out was the, uh, the big Bosch hammer. Uh, this is a little guide I've got. So that will fit under there. Okay, so here you have it again. Some slight contrast issues. Bloody British summer. So it slopes in like that. So it's bank holiday Monday, it means a kind of day off here in the UK, uh, I think it's the 29th of May uh, and I've actually taken this week off work so I, I think I've just got to get this trust done, mainly because I'm staring down a barrel of 10 tonnes of oak which is going to be coming sometime soon, I've got to coincide that with a telehandler. So this is the King Post, that's fine, um, I've done this side here, it's occurred to me I should just mortise the other side because regardless of what the dimensions are. I'll be working from these, that's fine. For one horrifying moment there, I thought maybe I'd cut it on the wrong side. You know, if you think about it, you could rotate this 90 degrees. I did do that on one of those little diagonals. But no, that's definitely the correct way round, I think. Now, after a significant amount of dithering, I am now ready to cut this tenon. You can understand why, because, you know, you, you can't add material back on. Right, we're going back now. Okay, so here's the mortise. I wouldn't say it feels small, small, but compared to the length of the wood, oh, I'm sure it's fine. Well, pretty it isn't, but I do think I've taken out enough material to accommodate that tenon. 
problem with this stuff is, is there's no like rule books on exactly how to do it. And I don't expect to be winning Carpenter of the Year, that's for sure. Okay, time for a bit of construction. The basic idea is to get everything onto the same level. It's two by four means that you can slide it. If you have to lift things up and down, little lips and stuff, it's impossible. So we've got this one going in here. Uh, I don't think it will go any further, it's just a bit tight. No probs. The problems are twofold. One, I haven't got enough room in this particular space here, so I can't come in from all the angles. And two, as you're trying to push one piece with the Avant, the other piece just moves around. So my latest idea, which is not far off how we solved this, was to basically use a bit of compression. So I dug out the old ratchet straps although they weren't long enough, so I used some blue wire from an old extension lead, which as you'll discover, isn't really gonna work. Just as an aside, it's bloody hot today, don't we? I mean, only by British standards, it's like 22 degrees, 75, but that's hot here. So look, that's not good enough. I'm not suggesting it is. Probably got about five mil there going up to about nine mil there. But as I sort of move it around, it's not going any deeper. So actually I think that's a cutting issue. Whew. Don't ask me how I'm gonna get it out. Yeah, this is gonna raise a few questions. Uh, the problem is I got it stuck and I had nothing to pull against. So I thought if I just put the wheel in my car, uh, on that ratchet strap, I could then push it out with the Avant. By the way, if you're ever thinking of coming to visit me on site, and please don't, try not to sneak up on me. Get the willies out of me. Lovely bit of German engineering there, helping out on site. And that engineering will have come from Zimunchen, Munich. One of my favorite cities, been there many times. So big shout out to Mark from Munich. Thanks very much for watching. I'm gonna move all of this out, despite the fact I quite like working here, because I'm gonna use the concrete flat surface to basically slide these parts of the truss into place. Right, getting a little bit Roman. <laughs> Look at that. So those ratchet straps are the right idea, but you couldn't really get any force when you're trying to tighten them. So what I need is a bit of power. Um, what better to do it than the Draper 51934 ratchet power puller, one ton capacity at a pretty reasonable 64 pounds 17. Just to be clear, this is not paid promotion. I bought this of my own volition. What I also particularly like about it are the various use cases. It can be for binding logs, getting a boat out of the water in a pair of snazzy slacks, and perhaps best of all, ramping a Renault 21, or is that a Renault 19, with an old style Draper license plate. All of which strike me as above and beyond my requirements, which is to pull a couple of bits of wood together. Yep. Okay, here we are. I've gone around the other way, so there you go. I've been 
pulling these two in against each other so we follow it down to here so now I mean it is perpendicular but it's not flush slightly different problem um, that doesn't mean that that's going to go into the king post we'll try that in a minute but it does show that it's not like it's locking in on the edges it just tells me we've got too much um, well the tenant's too long or the mortar's not deep enough particularly on where it's going in as you look at the camera or you look at the screen on the right hand side of that tenon I think that's perhaps just that's where it won't go in I think on the left hand side it does meet as we've seen right it's the next day it's Monday I've been giving this a bit of thought so and this joint here I am happy enough with it's not perfect I could maybe give it a little bit more room it could just do with maybe closing up a tiny bit there but I'll go with it. Okay, so, so we're looking at the cross beam here. And what it's catching on, see this, this shoulder here, or collar, whatever. <laughs> this sticky, meaty, uppy bit, right? Well, anyway, look, this is, as you can see, it's just a bit high where I've trimmed it. And it doesn't look like much, but the two and a half, three mil you've seen there, when you extend it across the, the angle, across the length of the other beam, is actually just stopping it going in so I'm just going to give that a bit of attention now because it's not a big fix right sorted that out don't think I'm going to be getting my invite to the annual woodworking dinner this year but you won't be able to see that bit and it's done let's try again this time we see cross member I think you call it that in there Dangerous. What, Alex, is that? I hear you cry. This is a fake tenon. So this is the tenon that's basically going in. And it took ages to do it through trial and error on the last one. And it's still catching. Um, and, it, you know, getting that beam to go in six times or so, you know, it's very heavy. It's like 250 kilos. So this time I use this. But actually it would also help me to try and understand where it's catching. Because it is still definitely catching on the edge it's not quite going in I am such an idiot <laughs> God. so as you can see I've cut the template of the tenon but um, unfortunately I have cut the kind of remainder bit to the left clearly should have been on the right hand side doesn't matter I can just trim that bit off it'll be fine and I'll use it but God I just I just can't help myself can I with hindsight I should have listened to Fred Hogg he's in Thailand thanks for watching he says measure twice cut once thing is fred i did measure it twice i did cut it once i just measured it twice and cut it once on the wrong side right a little bit tricky to film this because the amount of water around so i've taken that off anyway look you get the idea okay Not perfect but if the camera's picking that up okay Right, actually, that is very, very helpful. Basically, it's on this lip here. This is where it's catching. Right, so if this is successful, that will slot in there. Oh, look, it does, even on the edges. Sawdust here, maybe that. Easily does it there. God, I wish I'd done this sooner. Okay, I'm back on it. I've had a week's holiday in the lovely country of Croatia. I'm sure I've got some subscribers in Croatia. Send me a comment if you are, but may I say, what a lovely country. We had a lovely time. In theory, I haven't actually got that much to do. So, first of all, I've got to trim off this end tenon here. I've got to trim off this end tenon here. We've discovered from my little kind of mask tenon, fake tenon, we now know why this is catching this one here. So a bit of planing on there. And I think this one's done. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. And if so, it means I can slot everything together. And in theory, I can actually start to do the dowels and then cut the thing properly, properly. And then that is one raised collar truss done. Okay, so I've just broadly cut this end tenon to shape. So I'm just gonna plane it down using this template. There's a bit of wood down here. I 
think it's time for the drone. problem with the drone is you don't get any audio so instead you have to have me rattling on but what I'm doing here is get everything roughly in and look at the ratchet strap in blue at the bottom and that's attached to the yellow strap a new one on the outside and the draper winch so the goal is look I'm going to start winching it all the way from the outside and you can see pretty effective but we've still just got a small problem up the top yep so near yet so far this was just sliding back and forth and actually became a bit of a problem. You can see here that I'm trying to now winch it together. Um, I've got the winch stuck on a couple of coach bolts, but just wasn't working. So this is like the 10th time I've done this. I've taken some material off there. And I've also taken material both off this end. That's across the main cross beam. See on the bottom edge there. But also, but also I've got this one out on this side as well. Sometimes what you need is just a bit of brute force, and by that I mean a bash from the Avant. Normally I explain what I'm doing, and clearly I'm doing the doweling here, but I'll include a bit of video, but I haven't got time in this one, so I'll explain in the next video where I've got to do a whole load more of it, um, how I've gone about this. Right, here it is. Dowels are in, and that, my friends, is a raised collar truss. Now, if you look really carefully, you'll notice that I haven't put it up on the build yet. And two videos ago, I said I was going to do it. And then last video, I absolutely promised you I was going to have it done this time. Well, sorry to say, I haven't. In actual fact, the reason why is that I don't want to put it up on its own. I decided I want to do the rest of the frame around the barn area. So I'm going to give you another promise that by the time you see this area here at the end of the next video, there is going to be a proper frame up. Truth be told, I haven't actually done it yet, but it's going to happen soon, so I'm pretty confident. Anyway, enough of that. Right, if you can give the video a like, it's a massive help, and if you leave me a comment, I always try and reply. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time on Alex Builds.